Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave Dillon from ChaseTheSummit.com and today we've got a bit of a science experiment. A lot of people have asked in previous videos just how accurate wrist-based heart rate sensors are. So today, I really wanna test out the Garmin Phoenix 6's optical heart rate sensor against some of the competition. Now, I know the Garmin Phoenix 6 has a decent heart rate sensor, but wrist-based technology hasn't come that far yet, and it's not perfect. So in order to run a proper test, Polar sent me out two heart rate sensors that we're gonna review and test today. First up, we've got the Polar OH1 Plus, and this is actually an optical heart rate sensor that you can wear on your arm, in your bicep or forearm area. You can actually wear this with uh, swim goggles too up on the temple of your forehead, which is pretty cool. It's fully waterproof. What's interesting is the OH1 Plus is also optical, just like the Garmin Phoenix 6, but apparently it's more accurate. We'll put that to the test in a little bit. Along with that, Polar also sent me the Polar H9, and this is a chest strap that connects via Bluetooth or AMP Plus connectivity. Chest straps historically have been the gold standard for heart rate sensing. They typically are the most accurate, and I'm sure this will prove to be more accurate today, but we'll find out. Full disclosure here, Polar did send these two products out for review, but this is not a sponsored video, and I'm allowed to give you my honest, unbiased opinion. Plus, you're gonna see the metrics on the screen anyways, so you'll be able to tell if they're good or bad. For testing purposes, I'm gonna run on my treadmill, and I'm gonna do inclines and intervals in order to spike my heart rate up and bring it back down. I'll be recording the optical heart rate sensor of the Phoenix 6 on the Phoenix 6, and I'll be recording the other two on two separate smartphones using the Polar Beat application. Now, before we head over to the pain cave, I wanna remind you to subscribe down below and give me a thumbs up if you thought this was a helpful video. It helps my channel grow, and it makes me want to make more videos, so I appreciate it. Also, check out the link in the description for the Chase the Summit merch store. All right, let's get to it. So I ran for about one mile doing random intervals. I ramped up the incline, I declined, I ramped up the speed, I slowed down the speed, and I really just wanted to get a sense of how the three heart rate sensors uh, compared to each other. So here you can see the Polar OH1 Plus in purple, the Polar H9 in yellow, and the Garmin Phoenix 6 in red. Although the Garmin Phoenix 6 in this graph looks a little orangey because of the way they're overlaid. So right off the bat on this graph, you can see that the Garmin Phoenix 6 spiked up like crazy and then dropped off for some reason. That's definitely some sort of anomaly. I didn't happen in real life. While the other two sensors kind of gradually picked up, dropped off a little bit, and then started ramping up as I picked up speed on the treadmill. One observation that I find kind of interesting is that the Garmin Phoenix 6 tends to hit like a wall at around 160, 165 beats per minute, the Garmin Phoenix 6 doesn't wanna go any higher, even though my heart rate is going higher. It seems to hit a wall there where it's like a threshold and it won't go anymore. I don't know if that's like the sensing technology can't go any further or what, but I've seen this on other watches too. So it's not just the Garmin Phoenix 6 that's doing this. Well, you can see as I ramped up my speed here, the Garmin Phoenix 6 is actually reporting 166 beats per minute, while the Polar OH1 spikes up to 173, and the Polar H9 is down at 170. So those are pretty close together. And let me tell you, I definitely felt like I was in the 170s there. I was really pushing hard. I was, you know, having a hard time talking and breathing. So I was definitely up in the 170s, and that's where I know I'm like in my anaerobic threshold and I'm pushing. After that initial spike, I brought my heart rate back down by reducing the speed on the treadmill and coming to a zero degree incline. And I wanted to get my heart rate back down into the 130s or 140s. And the whole time I was looking at my watch trying to monitor my progress. So here's where things lined up again. Uh, when I brought my heart rate back down and let it stabilize a bit, all three heart rate sensors were reading about 135, 136 beats per minute. They're all pretty reliably reading that. This is where things got really interesting. Uh, I guess. We're talking about heart rate sensors here, but interesting to me. After I let things stabilize at that 135 low point, uh, I picked the speed back up again and I hit the incline to try to get my heart rate back up into the 170s again. So at this point, I was really pushing myself. I had the incline up, I had the speed up to like six miles per hour. Uh, so I was really hurting. <laughs> I was definitely in the pain cave at that point. And you can see that the Polar H9 is reporting about 176 beats per minute. The Polar OH1 Plus is somewhere in the middle here. It's showing about 163, 165 beats per minute. I found that kind of interesting. And then the Garmin Phoenix 6, struggling here, again, hitting that threshold wall where it won't go any further for some reason. And the Garmin Phoenix 6 is sticking around 145 to 150 beats per minute. And let me tell you, 
That is wildly inaccurate. That is not even close to the uh, effort I was at there. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> so not really a good showing of the Garmin Phoenix 6 in this particular part in this segment of this activity. So at this point, I dropped my speed again. I took the incline back down to zero to get my heart rate back down. And you can see that the Polar H9 and OH1 Plus have a nice gradual curve going back down to my uh, aerobic heart rate. Whereas the Garmin Phoenix 6 kind of just has a straight staggered line that goes and then drops into that 110 zone. So again, not a great showing for the Garmin Phoenix 6 here. So I found this part pretty interesting. It was weird how the Garmin Phoenix 6 kind of just flatlined for a bit and then it dropped back down where the Polar H9 and OH1 Plus really spiked up to that high heart rate zone and then had a nice gradual curve coming back down into my you know, base heart rate zone. So after the speed decreased and I got myself into more of a comfortable zone, uh, I got my breath down, I was just trying to really relax and, and get my heart rate really low. Uh, you can see here that the Polar H9 and OH1 Plus stabilize at around 110, 115 beats per minute, and that feels pretty accurate. Where the Garmin Phoenix 6 has way less resolution in its recording, uh, it's a little bit juddery, and it's definitely not stabilized like the other two have. It shows heart rates as low as 105, and it peaks up to about 115, so it's really just targeting a zone rather than a specific number. So again, for one last hurrah, I took the uh, incline back up on the treadmill and I sped up again to boost that heart rate back into the 150s. This time I didn't want to hit like my maximum effort level. I wanted to be at like 80%. So my heart rate would be in that, you know, lactate threshold zone, like 150 to 170. And this last spike was interesting because all three had a pretty good showing. You can see as my speed increased, the Garmin Phoenix 6 stayed right in line with the Polar H9 and OH1 Plus. So this last spike was pretty interesting. All three heart rate sensors did a pretty good job here. The Garmin Phoenix 6 stayed right in line with the uh, Polar H9 and OH1 Plus. They all had a nice gradual ramp up to a peak and a plateau at around 165 beats per minute. And again, that feels pretty accurate to the effort level I was at there. I wasn't at like my 100% go, but I was trying pretty hard. And again, once I hit that peak, I dropped my incline back down to 0% and I dropped my speed to two miles per hour to bring my heart rate back down again. And again, all three perform pretty well here. You can see that the Garmin Phoenix 6 is consistently staying in line with the Polar H9 and the OH1 Plus, which is pretty interesting. I mean, yeah, the Garmin Phoenix 6 does have a little bit more blips in the road here, but it's a lot more accurate than it was in the middle of the run. All right, so what's my takeaway here after all this testing? Um, this is a relatively small sample size, right? This was a one mile run on my treadmill for ideal conditions. Um, but what I can say is that the Garmin Phoenix 6 can be really good but it's not always really good. And even though this is a small sample size, uh, this is something I've been seeing a lot. I've been wearing all three of these heart rate sensors on a lot of runs, not just this one treadmill run. And the numbers here are pretty consistent with what I'm seeing on every activity. The Garmin Phoenix 6 just isn't as reliable as the other two forms of heart rate measurement. And it's important to remember, this isn't just an issue with the Garmin Phoenix 6. It's any watch with an optical heart rate sensor, even like this Coros Apex Pro that I have here. And that's not to say that the wrist-based technology is bad, it's just not perfect. So for a lot of people, the wrist-based heart rate sensor is ideal, right? Uh, it'll give you a good baseline of your fitness, it'll give you a good baseline of your effort level on a given run or activity. You'll be able to tell if you're in your uh, lactate threshold or you're approaching uh, the anaerobic state or any of that stuff, but it's not gonna give you super detailed metrics after the fact, and it may give you really erroneous metrics uh, in areas where you think you have a high output and might report a low output. With that said, if you're a hardcore athlete or you're somebody who really cares about the metrics and you want to see your progress through your training, I highly suggest picking up uh, an AMP Plus or Bluetooth connected heart rate sensor like the Polar H9 or the Polar OH1 Plus. Now personally, I don't like wearing chest straps like the Polar H9. It's a little uncomfortable for me, especially on long runs, like I don't wanna be running 20 miles with this thing on my chest. But if you want the absolute best metrics and the most accurate heart rate measurement, there's no other choice than a chest strap like the Polar H9. That said, I've been a huge fan of this Polar OH1 Plus because its form factor is just so small. Um, I can throw this on my arm. It's really comfortable and literally you forget it's there. It's very convenient. This can also pair directly with my Garmin Phoenix 6 and it will report the heart rate right on the display here. It'll record the data from this into my activity on my watch. 
that's ideal. It's waterproof, uh, so you can go, you can even go swimming with this if you want to. And it's got a 12 hour battery life, so it'll last for basically all of my activities unless I was doing like a 100 miler. And in that case, I would probably just rely on the wrist-based optical heart rate sensor because I'm not gonna be staring at my metrics that much during that long of an event. So that's my conclusion. Like I said, if you mildly care about your heart rate and your fitness, I'd say the wrist-based optical heart rate sensor is fine. But if you really wanna get into it uh, and you wanna see yourself improve through training or you, you wanna see yourself detraining, picking up a secondary heart rate sensor that you can wear on your bicep or your chest is gonna give you way better metrics. So I've got links for the Polar OH1 Plus and the Polar H9 down in the description so you can see the best pricing available right now. Anyways, that's all I got for today. That's just my little test on optical versus chest heart rate sensors. I really made this video for myself, but I figured I would share my findings with everybody so this might educate your purchasing decisions. If you've got any questions about any of these products, make sure you comment down below and I'll be sure to reply to them. Thanks for joining me this time and I'll see you in the next one.